What's up everybody? This is Colin from Holistic Heritage Homestead. Today, I'm going to show you how we set up our deep litter method and how we set up our chicken coop to be the first stage of our compost system. Now, this was cleaned out today. I cleaned the entire coop out and you're thinking, well, it doesn't look like it, Colin. I'm seeing lots of weird colors on the ground. Well, I'm going to explain that to you folks. Now, we have light on right now, okay? We do have electricity in our coop, but we almost never use it. Most of our, our chores as far as taking care of the animals, feeding them water, letting them in and out, that's all done in daylight hours. Doesn't matter the time of year. It's good to have as a backup, like right now I'm doing a video, right? Um, but we don't use any heat in this chicken coop, ever. We don't use any heat. And actually the compost system, the deep litter method itself creates a nice toasty atmosphere and environment for these, these chickens. So what I do is I'm gonna give you the secret recipe. And these are some things that I've learned from other folks over the years and I've experimented and tried different things. And these are the things that I always put in the coop. And I'm always adding general organic matter as well. Um, throughout the season. So I clean this out, I clean it out to the bare floor. I actually even rinse it out, to be honest with you. And I talked about leaving a remnant of the original compost, original deep litter in the coop every time. And let me show you this. In this corner over here, folks, you wonder what that very dark area is looking like. What is that about? That, if you look closely, is actually the remnant, and see how it's sticking together? Good compost should stick together because the bacteria, when things start breaking down, it actually creates almost like a glue that holds the soil together. So this will act as an inoculant for the rest of the deep litter and will be the catalyst for the compost system. This is the only thing I've saved, which is snugly in the corner, from the entire clean out. You'll see white, gray, green, tan, brown, black, all kinds of funny colors, right? Now, the first thing we put down, the very first thing is pine shavings. Now, again, we try to do everything to save money. Seven bag, six, seven dollar bag of pine shavings will last at least a full year. That's the nesting boxes and the initial covering of the floor. The reason why I use the pine shavings on the bottom is because pine shavings can actually, as per my research, the dust, which you probably see in the video right now, can actually not be the best thing for the chickens. It's not gonna necessarily kill them, but it can cause respiratory issues, okay? Just like any small particulate matter or dust can do for humans as well. So we wanna avoid that, folks. And I lay that down initially as kind of a sponge. It's a very sponge. I use the large size, not the smallest one, the larger size, like a, like a horse bedding, if you will. Um, I find that it holds the manure much better and also is much better for holding moisture, right? I don't want the moisture directly on the floor because that will decrease the, the lifespan of your, your flooring, right? Water's bad for flooring. And you don't want too much humidity just sitting around. You want it moving. That's why these windows stay open year round, okay? Any research with, with chickens lets you know that most breeds, obviously depending on the breed, that's my disclaimer, can handle the cold. Just like most birds in the wild can handle the cold just fine. What they do not handle as far as frostbite goes is the moisture. You don't want them getting their, their combs and their, their, their feet freezing. So you want the air constantly moving. On top of the pine shavings, I put down, you'll see the gray here, okay? That is wood ash from our wood stove, which is full of nutrients, good for acid loving plants. And again, I'm essentially building a compost pile in the coop, so just hang with me. And it's, it's, it's carbaceous, so it really, really is phenomenal to, to take out the, the smells. And I add, along with the wood ash, chunks of essentially like a charcoal, which is just burnt wood from the fire, the outside fire and some biochar, which is pretty much like oxygen deprived charcoal. And these things act as sponges for moisture, which is great. They act as 
carbon material that's really gonna soak up any ammonia or urea smell. There is no smell in this coop ever all year round. And what we're trying to do is, the bacteria is what breaks down the ammonia, right? So I wanna create a healthy ecosystem, if you will, for the, the microbiology, okay? And the wood ash is, is excellent because they also like to dust bathe in it and rub themselves in it. Apparently that's good for mites and if they might have ticks from outside, it's, it's good for that. It's good for their, their feathers and their bodies. And once they, they do their business and the menorah is mixed in with this, it's going to inoculate and really soak up all that nutrition into that, that wood ash biochar and the charcoal pieces, right? Besides that, I put a small layer, and that's the brown, see over there, of peat moss. Peat moss is insanely cheap. I have one bag lasts us two and a half years. That's when I use it even to make my own potting soil as well. Um, and that's just very fine, very kind of spongy material that also is very good for moisture. And it's, it's just great because it really covers the whole floor. It just falls in between all the small crevices and just makes sure there's a, there's a whole mat covering the floor. After that, I could start adding my greens, which is just grass from outside. Remember the let it grow, let it grow, let it grow video? All that stuff is free. That's my nitrogen for the, for the compost system, right? And that's going to once I build this level up, again, this is like a lasagna gardening method, right? If you're familiar with lasagna gardening or kind of like you would build a Hugo culture, okay? I'm, I'm going to get into videos about those in the future as well. Kind of like you build that Hugo culture mound or the lasagna gardening technique. You just want to layer your greens and your browns and your carbons and your nitrogens and any other organic matter you want. I mean, I add sticks and twigs. I find that larger pieces of things are really good for... Uh, really holding manure and again, the moisture, right? It also tends to create more airy compost pyres because it's irregular shaped and it keeps it more open to the air. I add more of the dried hay kind of grass, the stuff that's really been already dying off and it's kind of drying out for the season. I add some of that as well. And the only thing that you do not see here, folks, because I'm gonna add that tomorrow is leaves. We love leaves, they're excellent and for some reason, it seems to be the chicken's favorite thing to scratch through. They like all this stuff to scratch through, but if you get them some leaves, I don't know if it's the sound or the feeling to their feet or what it is, they will scratch through leaves and they will essentially be the food processor. <laughs> you know, they just grind and blend this up with just tilling it themselves, just scratching and crunching. And they will turn this into such a small surface area matter that it is perfect for composting. Absolutely perfect. You don't even need to really, you could fork it a few times. And what I do is essentially, I always add extra organic matter, extra material near the roosts. You see the, the wood ash that I threw all over there and some of the peat moss I threw all over there. I add extra hay and grass over there because that's where they, they go to the bathroom. That's where your, your manure pileup is really gonna be. And I, I, I simply take a rake and I rake it out from the bottom right over here. Here, you'll see I have a area, if you can see the separation there, where I put a cedar flooring in this whole eight foot by maybe three and a half to four foot, about eight foot by four foot area over here. That's all cedar flooring underneath. And I did that to be the, the area that I specifically take the excess manure and I just rake it over there. Don't mind that aggressive rooster. He, he had temporarily locked everyone out of the coop so I could make this video and he's wondering if there's an intruder. So roosters will definitely protect your flock. I also add corn stalks, broad leaves, sorghum grasses, anything that has a, a wider you know, leaf as well. Um, and I actually, as I pull some of, the, some of the corn out, for example, I actually leave some of the soil and every, all that soil and all the roots all attached. And I'll throw that directly in the main compost area. And this gets built up all the way. It's gonna fill in that gap. It's gonna meet 
that inoculating original compost, just like in a regular compost pile, you'll take some of your older or more finished compost, which will follow that biology and you'll introduce it as a catalyst to kind of kickstart or jumpstart your, your new compost piles. That's exactly what I'm doing here, folks. And what I like to do, and this has seemed to work for me, is add a little earth, a little actual soil from the ground outside, get some soil in there. That's where all the, the new microbes and that new life are, is, is gonna be. Now, all of the magic of rhizophagy and all of the synergistic microbiology happens at the root level, specifically at the root hairs and the root tips, right? So those two, two to three fists a piece size mounds of soil attached to the roots of these plants that I just ripped out of the ground are going to inoculate this compost beautifully well, okay? Beautifully well, because that's living, it's not sterile, okay? And then I layer. And as if and when, I'm mean, gonna again, this is the first layer. This is gonna be much deeper. I'm gonna try to bring this up to at least two feet, maybe even three feet. Um, I'm gonna add some roosts as well, okay? Um, the compost area is in its own corner. Roosting area in its own area. And far away from everything else, this is a great tip, folks, your nesting boxes. Now, the pine shavings, I add extra pine shavings to the boxes themselves. That's all I use in the boxes. I could use leaves, sure. But pine shavings are just easy to see. It's easy to spot if there's something weird going on, if there's any manure in the, in the nesting boxes. Maybe I have some, some younger chickens who are still being trained, all right? See, beautiful eggs hanging out in there. Flawless, beautiful. Your eggs will always be clean. And another little tip that I've learned, which is excellent, is you give them a carpet, just like after a, a, a long, hard day's work, you wipe your feet before you step into the house or, you know, we have a mud room, so we just completely <laughs> change up, right? You wanna give them, if you find that you're having manure or some weird stuff going on in your nesting box, it might not be from the chicken themselves, it could be from their feet. They're stepping in the manure, in the coop, and then they're just jumping up into the boxes and bringing it with them. So add extra pine shavings in front of your nesting boxes. This way they got a little carpet, a little, little welcome mat. They want a clean, comfortable, soft area to lay eggs. Okay, they want a, a soft, comfortable, warm, clean area, dry. That's why I put the pine shavings there. When I clean out the nesting boxes, which I do every week or so, I just kind of take handfuls and pull some out and add some fresh pine shavings. And that lasts me a very long time. And those pine shavings go from there right to here. Everything has a flow, okay? Here's our door, right? Everything gets cleaned out. I do once a year. Maybe I'll do a partial clean out halfway just to feed the or inoculate the outside compost pile. But as this builds up, you can see that dark coloring in the corner there, folks. That's, that gets up to pretty much like five foot high, okay? Maybe even higher. I just mound that and it essentially creates so much heat. It is, is warm to the touch in the winter time. And again, it, these chickens love the scratch in this. It's like a little sauna for them in the winter. They love the scratch in that warm bioactive pile. They're gonna eat all kinds of things we can't see. And I also like to, another little pro tip is there are certain organic fertilizers out there that come with their own colonies of bacteria and mycorrhizae already there. So. A handful or two, which again cost pennies. I will throw this once I have this pile built up to that height, and it's gonna go all the way over here, all the way down to where that door is, all the way to the window. It's a huge, huge compost pile. I will build it up to that height, and I will start to sprinkle some of that throughout in layers, and it it is an amazing catalyst, just like the, the soil itself and the inoculating older compost from the previous clean out. So, just focus on adding organic matter. We try not to feed the chickens too much in the coop, okay? We like to feed them outside because that's the second stage of the composting system. But if you feed them in here, it gives them things to scratch, maybe some whole grains, some snacks and mealworms or something like that, um, just to keep them scratching and just tilling this. And there's a flow from corner, it gets pushed into this compost, and then it gets directly out that door, that big door and then I move it into the chicken yard. So this is stage one of where the compost starts. I layer this up, it starts to cook down. Everything is already here. So 
Most people wait till stage two or three to start layering. No, just put everything you need in the compost in your initial feeder system, right? I have everything I need. I could just take this stuff and just put it in a container and it would age into perfect compost, okay? You wanna, re I wanna recommend you, you wait at least 90 days anytime you're dealing with any animal manure. You know, this is for safety and cleanliness and all that. A heated compost system, about 90 days. Yes, in a survival situation, I don't know, I'm not recommending anything, but maybe, I don't know. You could just use that and plenty of people do, all right? Um, but if you're not in a survival situation, and again, I'm using my general disclaimer of do your research, make sure it's safe and it's not gonna hurt anybody. But you're not gonna put fresh manure really on any plants. I heard rabbit manure, you could do that really, but in general, even for that, I personally like to age everything and cure it and kind of cook it down because the compost will heat up to a nice temperature and will kill any of the, the bad stuff that could be in there for 90 days minimum. Stage one is in the coop. Stage two is the clean out, which goes right into the chicken yard. We have a chicken yard that I built for them because you can't always free range. Maybe you have to leave and go to the store or you want to go on vacation or you're gone for the day, right? You want a safe place where chickens can still graze and eat some fresh grass, you know, get that vitamin K2 in the diet, you know. You want a place for that. And essentially, you create the second compost pile, giant compost pile, just like in the let it grow, let it grow, let it grow video. I'm composting in the earth and on the earth itself. Stage one, stage two is the chicken run. Stage three goes into the aging bin, which is a giant area for the compost to actually start to cook down and really refine and and finish and make those nutrients bioavailable and make the microbiology mature and really uh, increase in population. And then I go to the fourth stage, which is the finishing area. And that is essentially finished compost already, but maybe it needs a, it could use more time, right? It's not gonna hurt it, but that's the ready to use compost. It's ready in the coop, rolled into stage two outside, put into the, the finishing, piles are in your finishing bins, you're not going to want the chickens to have access to that because you don't want fresh manure. The whole point is for that to be a sealed system that's cooking down for at least 90 days. And then you want something that is safe that you can put directly on your, you know, on your soil for your garden or for your containers. And you're saving a lot of money because that is better than fertilizer. There's nothing more bioavailable and, and, and ready and mature than, than compost. All of these things that I add, and I don't add many food scraps to this. I'll add food scraps outside because that's where I feed the animals, right? In super, super harsh conditions, maybe like the winter we had here in the Ozarks last winter, I might feed them inside just to keep them warm and comfortable, right? But even then the system's fine because I have a compost pile here in the coop and there's no rodents, no mice, nothing gets in this thing. This is like Fort Knox. Um, it's a sealed system. And then wait till you see the chicken run video that I'm gonna do, you'll see how I, I fortified that as well to keep it predator and pest free. So work your colors, work your carbons, work your nitrogen, work your biochar, your peat moss, your, your stalks, your, your hay, your grass, all of that, work it into one system, use your free materials and get the system going, okay? Hope I didn't forget anything of value. I'll, if not, I will do another follow-up video. But if you like this video, if you felt that it was valuable to you, and this could teach you a little bit about the system, about the lasagna deep litter method, then let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, share your tips, share your advice that you use in your coops as far as your setup. Okay, also we have our, our strings hanging here. That's where we put the water and the food so it's off the ground if we need to feed them inside, okay? And let me know what works for you folks. As always, we appreciate the love and support. Nothing but love for you folks as well. And get to it, get into it, get it done. I hope you have a great season. Hopefully it's a good winter and your chickens are happy, safe and get that compost ready to rock for next year. Take care.